might be a slightly different video. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go on a little pug adventure. I'm actually gonna go down to Papa West's house and borrow his Nikon Coolpix S9500, I think is what it's called. It's, it's a point and shoot camera that he's had for quite some time. Um, I mean, now he has an iPhone, so I don't really think he uses it anymore. So I'm gonna take it off his hands for a few days and maybe do a few videos with it. Maybe do some street photography, that might be kind of fun. And just see how well it holds up. It's a, uh, it's already pretty old, but I mean, used, it's like $100 or something. It might have been like 300 brand new. Maybe we'll do some comparisons between it, the Sony cameras, and my smartphone. I also got this, which is a brand new gimbal just released <coughs> three years ago. It's the Zhiyun Weeble S. And it's honestly a very small, compact, kick-ass gimbal that was not expensive. It's kind of like the cheapest gimbal that I could find that can support a full frame camera and it was able to hold this lens no problem which this is the 14 to 24 and it is not a light lens so it's very impressive that it can hold so much weight it was a little bit tricky at first learning how to balance it quickly but I got it and it's actually very easy to do and what's cool is the the plate is actually on the camera right now but once you have it balanced if you just leave the plate on the bottom of the camera and you don't change anything else, it'll stay balanced. You can take it off and put it back on as much as you want. My first gimbal though, so maybe they're all like that. I don't know. But I figured we'd uh, take that with us with, of course, Malcolm the Destroyer. Uh, my dad has some dogs. He's going to play down there with them. And we'll see if we can get some nice slow motion pug B-roll footage. And then afterwards, we'll come back home and we'll, uh, we'll play around with that camera in video mode. And then the next video I do will probably be focused more on the stills performance of it. So anyway, I got to get ready to go. I got to get the pug dressed, get them presentable for public and then we're gonna head down. So I'm home now. I'm using a auto white balance on the a7 IV, but now I guess they have an auto white balance lock feature, which is kind of cool. I saw on a channel that I'll put right here. This guy's really cool. He, he goes really in depth with mostly Sony cameras, but he, he kind of did a little work around for uh, not being able to change the white balance in custom saved modes. But anyway, that was a little fun trip down to Papa West's house. I think it was more for Malcolm than for me, although he didn't really end up playing all that much. Little jerk. I really wanted to get some nice B-roll. But anyway, I came back with this, which is the Nikon Coolpix S9500. It's a little point and shoot. I don't know what year it came out in, 
I'll put it somewhere on screen. It's a little 18 megapixel point and shoot camera. It's got no flippy screen or anything. Uh, obviously it's got no viewfinder. You know, I was planning on coming back home and doing like a, a video test with it in this video, but there's just little things about using cameras like these that you gotta be aware of. And uh, this is not a video camera, so it only shoots 30p. And this timeline on Premiere is gonna be in 24p. And I learned my lesson using the baby camera, trying to drop 30p footage into a 24p timeline. It looks awful. So I might have to do that in a separate video. I'll just maybe do a whole video in 30p so I don't have to worry about it. There's not much in the way of manual controls with this camera. If we look at the settings here for video, that's pretty much it. You can choose resolution and that's it. Everything is 30p. And it's obviously it tops out at 1080p which is fine. But other than that it's just like wind noise reduction, autofocus mode, stuff like that. Not a whole lot of options to choose from. I don't even think you can set the white balance in video with this, so any video I shoot with this camera is gonna be pretty awful. But that's not exactly why I got it. I got it because I wanna do some stills with it, and of course, it doesn't shoot raw. We're still gonna be pretty limited as far as that's concerned, but it does do this. And that zooms in one shit ton, I believe is what Nikon used to call it. Maybe you guys can see. zooms in like 22 times. I think it's equivalent to like a 500 millimeter lens. So that actually might be kind of fun to play with. I really wish that these cameras shot raw because there would actually be a purpose to bringing this out versus a smartphone, but smartphones shoot raw and these don't. So really it's like, there's, it's no wonder that point and shoots died. They're just so limited, you know? But I still think it could be fun to play with the JPEGs. And I mean, when I'm shooting daytime street, I probably won't push the files that far anyway. I tend to increase contrast a lot which just crushes the, the blacks. And really, the only reason I really need to shoot raw is if I'm like drastically shifting colors, which I won't be doing, or if I'm trying to lift blacks a lot, which I also really probably won't be doing. God, this thing is hard to hold on to. It's just like a, it's like a flat little brick. But I think it might be kind of fun to play with. It's tiny, obviously. I, I don't think that anybody's even gonna notice that I have a camera when I'm out in the street. So we're definitely gonna do probably a couple POVs with this. Maybe we'll even take it out at night, just for shits and giggles, just to see how rough the images end up looking. And I don't know, maybe I'll convert them to black and white and the noise will actually uh, look kind of cool. But as much as I am excited to go shoot with this camera, I walked away from my dad's house with not one Nikon, but two. My dad used to be into photography before I was born and he went and pulled this out of the closet, which is a Nikon FE. This thing came out in 1978. It's, it's an SLR, it's a film camera. And the little bit I've read about this camera, basically people were kind of apprehensive about it when it came out because it uses a battery and you need a battery to use it. And obviously film shooters are used to everything being completely mechanical. So history is kind of cyclical in that way. Everybody was scared of batteries and then they were scared of digital and then they were scared of mirrorless. And now we're scared of AI, but AI is the one that's really gonna destroy everything. You mark my words. But until then, we can play around. Um, he only had two lenses for it. This one, which is a little Nikon 50 millimeter f1.8. These are all, these are both uh, F mount, obviously. And then this, which is really interesting. This is a 85 to 205 f3.8. It's a constant zoom. And it took both of us a minute to figure this thing out. He hasn't used it in so long, but it's actually got four control rings on it. This one's for the aperture down here. And then we've got a macro focus. This is for close-ups. And then the zoom. And then a telephoto focus, which I had no idea even existed on old lenses. Two different focus rings. So I guess you learn something new every day. I don't know shit about film photography. I don't know shit about vintage gear at all. And it's kind of making me interested. So I actually bought a really cheap little Nikon F to Sony E-mount adapter. And as excited I, as I am to throw some film in this and go try it out, I'm a little bit intimidated and I know myself and I know if I start getting into film photography, my whole house is probably gonna end up turning into a dark room at some point. So I'm gonna venture into this slowly and carefully, but I really wanna try these lenses out. I love my Sony cameras and uh, this Laowa 100 millimeter F2.8 macro lens is completely manual and I actually really enjoy shooting with this thing. It's, it's very satisfying to adjust aperture with a ring like this and know that it's actually 
mechanically moving the aperture, unlike something from Sony where, you know, or Sigma, where it's all kind of wire based and the lens isn't attached to a body, then you're not actually moving the aperture. It's, it's all just kind of fake, you know what I mean? So I'm actually really excited to shoot with these. So expect some videos on that as well. And you know, I've been really wanting a 50 millimeter F1.8 because the Sony one is kind of just a cheap plastic piece of shit and I just don't want to deal with it. Um, I bought it and I ended up returning it like a week later because it's just not a very good lens. So until they come out with something new, maybe I'll play around with something like this. I mean, it's fully manual, obviously, but it is an F1.8. It is 50 millimeter. I cleaned it quite a bit. It's got this UV filter on it that he's had in the bag for 30 plus years. So underneath the filter, lens is actually in pretty damn good shape. Um, the telephoto is, it's got, I think it's got some mold and some dust on the inside of it. So I'll probably end up taking the camera and the telephoto lens into a camera shop and see if they can clean it up and get it oiled and greased up and ready to be used. And as far as I know, this thing doesn't shoot 24p either or 30p or 60p or 120p or 240p at all. So anyway, I just wanted to like show you guys these and uh, maybe have fun with a little bit of pug b-roll. So I hope you guys enjoyed if you're still here. If you are still here, please hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already. And you can catch my next video where I make a fool out of myself using manual lenses for somebody who is very used to using new Sony autofocus for street photography. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one.